always sleep in the past. I'm right. Warning! You're about to watch a grown man take a children's movie way too seriously. Your discretion is advised. Oh boy. Am I the only one who feels this year has kind of been underwhelming in the terms of animation? Not to say everything's been bad, we've had some pretty good stuff here and there. But for me, it kind of feels like most of it has been ranging from okay, all the way down to mediocre, to just plain awful. But I'm willing to extend an olive branch here and admit that maybe it's not the industry's problem here, it could also be me. You see, I kind of lost all motivation at the beginning of the year, if you know what I mean. So coming back to the channel seemed a bit daunting at first. I needed inspiration, a good film to bring me back. I needed a good adventure film, a bit flawed, but the characters are quite charming. It's always good to see a Jules Verne type of story come back to the big screen. And of course, coming from Disney, it looks amazing. So it's kind of sad that they didn't do a good job of the marketing of it. So of course, you know I'm talking about Atlantis, the Lost Empire. It's quite brilliant in some aspects, but then you have stuff like a Strange World. This thing is one of the most boring animated films I have ever seen. To the point I think this might be Disney's worst animated film ever made. Or at the very least, the top five worst for sure. The characters are cookie cutter, poorly developed. The strange world itself is pretty bland and boring. And the overall tone and message is kind of pretentious. Okay, for example, there are a couple of scenes with the double entendre. In one, they use a card game to basically hammer in the message of the film and the main character's conflicting views. That's fine, it's a great way to show character. What's not fine is that every single time the film does something barely subtle, it feels like they need to just stop in the middle of it and announce to the audience what exactly they're doing. So in return, it feels more like Dora the Explorer rather than an actual film made by thinking people and not by drunk sea cucumbers. Yes, that'll do. So in order for me to rip open this spoiled, poorly marketed can of worms of a film, allow me to walk you through the story's premise first. The story starts with a father and son explorer duo. The father, Jaeger Clade, has a bigger than life personality and the simple motto of punch it first, ask questions later. While his son, Searcher Clade, is meeker and more intellectually driven to the point that he doesn't enjoy adventuring all that much. Kind of like Dr. Venture's relationship with his father. They live in the land of Alava... Uh, Alav Alava... Avalonia, right. They live in the land of Avalonia, a place surrounded by impregnable... No, impreg... Impregnable. A place surrounded by impregnable mountains. So, of course, their big mission in life is to find a way to get through said mountains and help Avalonia expand into the world. Quite honestly, I don't see what the big deal is. In the end, all you need is ten good men and some climbing spikes. However, the adventure comes to an end when the duo ends up clashing heads over the electrical plant Searcher discovers. You see, Searcher wants to bring it back to Avalonia to see what it can do while his father just wants to get over the other side of the mountains. They have an argument... Jaeger leaves his son and ventures forward and kind of just disappears. Then we cut to 25 years later. The plant Searcher discovered is now called Pando, and it's the main source of energy for Avalonia's many technological wonders, as it's become sort of a steampunk utopia. Searcher's become a farmer and now has a family of his own, a pilot wife, a three-legged dog, and a son who, big surprise, doesn't want to be like his boring farmer of a dad, and instead wants to explore the world. So, long story short, the Pando starts dying one day, so now Searcher and a team have to go and see what's wrong with it. They follow a route trail that leads them to a secret underground world of wonders, full of creatures. And wouldn't you know it, Jaeger Clade is still alive. So now they have to save Avalonia, mend broken family bonds, and report this as an economic failure in Disney's next income tax form. I'm going to be honest, 
To me, this movie feels as though it was made by a committee. Not in the sense of evil executives brainwashing our children with woke trends, run for your lives! <coughs> It feels more like a bunch of people discuss possible ideas for their next film, they sort of like the concept of a Jules Verne type of adventure, and eventually went with this because nothing better popped into their heads. It really feels like everyone involved treated it like just another project to work on. This doesn't really strike me as the sort of story somebody was dying to tell. Which is kind of ironic that they're presenting this crazy world teeming full of life while the overall product feels lifeless and by the numbers. Nothing gets any real time to breathe or be developed. For example, remember that I mentioned there's a scene where Jaeger leaves his son Searcher? Yes, um, he just leaves. And it's not like Treasure Planet where you're like, oh my god, that bastard just left! It's more like, oh no, there he goes, listfully going forward that I could easily catch him on a brisk walk, I guess. Literally, the guy who was sitting next to me in the cinema leaned over to his wife and I heard him say, wait, is that it? Which, now that I come to think of it, is a pretty nice way to sum up everything about this film. It doesn't feel like a complete story. It feels more like they worked on a scene, finished it on a technical level and said, yes, that's enough. Things are happening. Send it in. And just went for the next one. And by the way, Little advice, make sure you introduce and develop your characters a bit before adding character-oriented conflict. Jaeger and Searcher start arguing in the beginning about their different life goals, and it's more awkward than dramatic. We don't really know them because we don't know much about them besides their basic archetypes. So it doesn't feel like you're watching characters. You're more like suffering through drama as it's more comparable to watching strangers argue in a supermarket. I really tried to care about these characters and by God, I felt nothing. Let me start with the family. First of all, I find it hard to believe they are farmers. They seem more like a Californian hipster's version of an ideal farmer more than anything. For example, in the Suits episode of Love, Death and Robots, the characters are simplistic but believable. They actually remind me of people that I know, and most of them, yeah, grew up on farms. You know the type of person, the one who'll go for the calm, simplistic environment while doing all these back-breaking physical jobs. But not in Strange World. No, these are not your typical farmers. They have steampunk aesthetics. They eat avocado toast in the morning, play card games in the evening, and dance to electric swing in the night. And by the way, there's a scene earlier on where the family are cooking and dancing to the tune of Caravan's Place's Lone Digger. Or maybe it was Miracle. I don't remember well because my brain almost shut off during the middle of the scene. I don't know, but it was something about these types of songs being reduced to mindless family-friendly tunes that really bothered me. It was barely creative. Not a single shot was interesting, and the movements didn't even match up to the song that well. Mind you, Spongebob did this exact concept better more than 20 years ago. And talking about the past, 20 years ago was probably the only time where this movie might have gotten a bit of praise. You know, before most animated films managed to do every concept present in here way better. Oh, a steampunk adventure? You have Atlantis. Exploring a new and weird natural world? Well the Croods. Father-son and grandparent dynamics full of conflict? Arthur Christmas? And yes, let's continue talking about the family, specifically the dads. First you have Searcher Clade. The idea that he doesn't want to be like his big, strong, macho, randy savage of a dad was done better in the Book of Life. And throughout most of the movie, he has this annoying, passive-aggressive demeanor. I get it, he's mad at his father for just leaving, and at his son for coming along. But by God that he's just really annoying in my book. And then you've got Jaeger Clade. I swear to God this guy's competing hard for the title of Disney's worst father. Say whatever you want about Buck Cluck, but not only did he have a lot on his plate, he never left his son and even acknowledged how wrong he was by the end. Jaeger doesn't really get that. 
The movie tries to make it seem as though he's redeemed himself by the end just because he leaves his dream behind. <coughs> but the way he has behaved all the way through makes it hard to actually believe that he's changed even a little. He acts selfishly for 99% of the movie, so it's kind of hard to buy his remorse for the one scene he behaves differently. And then you have the big star of the film, Ethan Clade. The first openly gay main Disney character, bearing in mind. After Lightyear's Hawthorne, and probably Luca. And those restricted Michael Eisner tapes which are held in the Disney vault which nobody ever talks about, okay? We don't even <laughs> but anyways, yes, it's good that Disney is giving this type of representation. But shame it's only for about two kind of pointless scenes that can easily be edited out. You know, in case another homophobic country decides to boycott another Disney film. <coughs> and even then, they don't kiss or do anything with the relationship. It's so bland that I felt more sympathy towards the young boy in the heartbeat short than I felt for Ethan in an hour and a half. So, word of advice here. If you're going to represent the LGBTQ community, or any community for that matter, stick to your guns. Yes, not everyone is going to agree with you, but don't cater to the Frankenstein mob mentality. Don't reduce it to a scene that can easily be removed with a simple, Hi, I'm Xi Jinping and you're not watching the Disney Channel. Bum, bum, bada. So yeah, Ethan, apart from being Disney's first LGBTQ character, Ethan isn't that interesting personality-wise. To be honest, he's kind of messy. He spends most of the film talking about how much he wants to have an adventure and not be like his boring old dorky dad. Ahem. <clears throat> and even then, for all his talk about adventure, we don't really see him take any real initiative or do much exploring. He just goes into a cave, gets scared, and then proceeds for the rest of the film to talk about how amazing this place is and how much he belongs there. Ugh, Flapjack seems complex by comparison. And when he's not talking about how great the strange world is, he's being whiny and passive-aggressive just like his dad. Which now occurred to me. Every male character in this film is either bland or stupid, while the female characters are just boring. The mum, I'm going to be fair, she has two cute scenes that I liked. Okay, I guess it's not worth watching the entire film just for those, mind you. They were passable, but otherwise, she's just boring. And then there's this female Captain Mare thing, whose name I can't remember, and actually I forgot about her until the final act. I don't even know if she has a personality, and quite honestly, I don't care enough to find out. She's so bland, she makes Bellwether look like Richard III. And finally, you have the crew. Remember that when I mentioned them for the first time, I put team in big quotation marks? Well, that's because they might as well not exist. Most of them don't have a single line of dialogue, let alone a personality. I mean, I couldn't name you one of them if I had a gun to my head. And that wouldn't be so bad if at least they killed off some of them. Remember how many people Atlantis killed? Jesus, the opening was basically Pompeii. But not in here. Not only are there no deaths on screen, the only person who dies in this entire thing is a nameless pilot, which even then I wasn't completely sure he died. The way the scene played it, it looked like he could be brought back for the post credit scene or something. I might sound mad or irritated, but that's just because of the awful year I've just had. Truth be told, this film made me feel nothing. An hour and a half of pure nothing. <sighs> Some people are saying that Disney is barely marketing this movie in an attempt to drive more attention to their remakes. But I disagree. They probably saw how much of a flop this was and did the wise thing. Let it die. Let it die, let it die, let it shrivel up and... Because as things stand, it's probably Disney's worst animated film to date. Home on the Range has a catchy soundtrack and the villain scene was well done. Chicken Little has the baseball scene which is really well choreographed and a cute gag here and there. And even Planes has a couple of cute scenes. But in Strange World, there's nothing. I even struggled to write this script not because of time, but because I could barely remember this film. 
As of the moment of writing this exact line, I want you all to know I saw the movie two days ago and it's already leaving a blank grey space in my mind. And don't come with me with the whole oh well, this movie's just for kids argument. This is not for kids, it's for toddlers. And even then, I've babysitted through movies made for very little kids and they were way smarter and more engaging than this garbage. Quite honestly, the only strange part about Strange World is how Disney agreed to release it at all in the first place. Oh. Hey, can you wrap it up already? You said you'd be done in 45 minutes. Yeah, we're just doing the last line. That's it. We've pretty much done the entirety you of the You told me now. 45 minutes. I know, it, it just went a little bit over because we had to do some rewrites. That was all. Okay, 10 minutes and that's it, and then you get your ass in the kitchen. Okay, okay, that's fine. So, what do you think? You have issues. Ugh. Uh.